Good morning, Restoration Chapel. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you're having an awesome morning, a great morning, a great weekend. And I uh, just wanted to let you know we are praying for you and we are with you. If you have your Bibles, go ahead. And it's the same scripture we read last week. But James 1, go ahead and turn to James 1. If you're taking notes, write down James 1. We're going to be in verses 12 through 15. I'll give you a second just to get there. With that being said, we're continuing our series, James, Faith Plus Works. And during this series, we've noticed a lot of different things. We've noticed that during trials, we can have joy. And even though it's hard, we have to have the radical attitude to have that joy. We've also learned how to deal with trials and temptations in our life. And last week, we began looking at temptations with a sermon called Hooked and talked about a strategy uh, uh, that helps us to go against temptations in our lives. And last week, we looked at what temptation does not come from God. The Bible says that in James. It does not come from God, but it comes from our sinful desires within. Does that mean the devil won't put it out there? No. Does that mean the world won't put it out there? No. But we got to understand that we will not fall under temptations unless we have a sinful desire inside of us. Also, we learned last week that temptation, uh, it has power. That power is it dwells down into our heart. It deals with our emotions and it has a life on its own. And lastly, we learned last week that temptation leads to death. And not just a physical death, but a sinful death. Uh, not just a sinful death, a spiritual death. What I mean is this, is that when we allow temptation to take part in our heart and it deals with our emotions, and when we allow it to have a life of its own inside of us, then it takes us away from God. And when it takes us away from God, it leads us to a spiritual death. And when that spiritual death, that day that we get to heaven, he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. So temptation is a big deal. Temptation is something that we have to get rid of. James 1, 12 through 15 says this, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will re receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when <coughs> he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desires is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Now the last week that we looked at the strategy for temptation. This morning I want us to look at four practical or three practical ways that we can overcome temptation in our lives. You see, it's not good enough not just to know about temptation. It's not good enough to say, oh, I understand, Bobby. But we have to restrain and overcome the temptation. As I was studying, I found a sermon by Donald Gray Barnhouse, and, and, and he preached this in 1957. The sermon was entitled Temptation and How to Meet It. And he ended his summary with this, this uh, he ended his sermon with this kind of summary. He says this: <clears throat> You're gonna be tempted by the flesh. Run away. You're gonna be tempted by the devil. Stand up and fight from the word of God in your hand. The sword of the spirit and the shield of faith with the, with, wherewith you shall be abide. To quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. <clears throat> and as to the world round about you, be not conformed, but day by day, ask God to pour you in the mold of Christ. With that being said, I want to give you some ways to overcome temptation. I want to give you some ways when it's not just your simple desire, when it is the world, when it is the devil, how we can overcome the temptations that come in our life. And the first one is this, when our simple desires wants us to tempt, the first thing we need to do is flee. The word flee means to run away from a place or a situation of danger. We have been taught our whole life to stand up and fight. But God tells us to flee temptation that deals with our sinful desires. Just look at what the Bible says. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 11. It says this. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction. And, and for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through the, with many sor sorrows. But listen to this last part of the scripture. It says this. But you, O man of God, flee these things. Pre 
Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. You see, we see these examples in the Bible. We see what he's telling us to do, to run, to get away from those things that are tempting you from your sinful desires. And we also have some examples. Look at David in 2 Samuel 11. We all know the story. Most of us do. Where David is sitting up and he's not where he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be fighting, but he's in his castle, sitting outside, looking outside his window. And all of a sudden, he sees Bathsheba bathing on the rooftop. And we all know what happens. He calls her in and they do unclean things that, that, that they're not supposed to do. Well come to find out she was married and he actually has her husband put on the front line so he can be murdered and we see uh, uh, adultery, we see lust we see murder, we see all these things in the one after God's own heart then in Genesis 29 we see Joseph and Potiphar's wife, the Bible tells us that Potiphar's wife approached him and asked him to do unclean things. But Genesis 39 and 12 says this, that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Joseph ran for his life. David lingered and watched. Then he entertained his lustful thoughts and that led him to, con uh, to, to commit sin in his life. But Joseph said this, I'm not even going to be in the same place. You see, if there's something that tempts us, like a magazine, a movie, a TV show, a person, a place, a, a, a something in our life that tempts us, the Bible tells us to do this, get away. It is okay to run from those sinful desires. It is better to run than fall. One person put it like this, and I love this quote. I wish I had heard this quote many years ago, but I just heard it this week, and that's this. He who would not fall down ought not to walk in slippery places. What I mean is we must flee from situations in our life that cause us to fall. If it's a relationship, if it's a computer, if it's a TV, if it's a magazine, if it's a place, if it's a bar, if it's, a, if it's this or if it's that, and it causes us to fall under temptation, flee from it. Get away from it. You see, when those sinful desires tempt us, that's when we have to flee. But what happens when the world tempts us? Not just the sinful desire, but the world tempts us. Things that we can't flee from. Things that we can't get away because we're around it all the time. You see, when the world tempts us, then we got to understand one word, and that's this faith. We need to believe in the one who brought us out of temptation in the first place. 1 John 5 and 4 says this, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. You see, when, we, when, when, when the world comes at us and there's no way to flee, when you're at the office building and they say, hey, you got to do it this way or you're this way or that way, what you got to rely on is sometimes you can't leave the job right away, but you got to rely on your faith. Faith makes God real to each and every one of us. Faith helps us remember that Jesus died on the cross for us so that our temptation has no power over us. Faith is the reminder of the price that was paid so that we can have everlasting life. Just like the old light in your car. When it comes on, you don't take a hammer to it and break it. You don't go after it and knock it out. You know what you do? You go and do what needs to be done to get it fixed by putting more oil in your car. Same way with faith. Faith is the oil light that comes on when the world comes at you. It shows you where not to go. It shows you what not to do. It shows you how to live for Jesus. But you've got to have faith in those hard times. You see, sometimes we can't flee, but when we can't flee, we still need to have faith. We need to have that faith so we don't fall for the temptations in our lives. We need to have faith because I love what the scripture says that Christ's love, uh, 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 it compels us. It compels us to be different. That faith compels us to understand I can't fall under that temptation. 
So now that we know when our sinful desire comes, now that we know when temptation, uh, when the world comes after us with these temptations, the third thing is this, what happens when the devil comes? You see, sometimes the devil tempts us. You want to make a matter of fact, look at the book of Genesis, the devil came to eat. Came to eat. Look at Jesus. The devil came to Jesus. You see, the sinful desires inside of us make us fall for temptation, but the devil knows how to use those sinful desires against us. And we've got to have a, a plan so when the devil comes at us, when we can't flee because the devil's going to chase us. Do you understand that this morning? That the devil will chase you to try to get you to come back to where you need to be. And when the world, in the world sometimes we can be godly in a world that's not godly. But sometimes the devil just comes after us. What do we do? The Bible says this. We must fight. Just look at what James 4 and 7 says. And we'll talk about this later on in this series. But I want to look at it a little bit uh, this morning. It says this. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. James tells us how to fight. And I love this. Because James just don't tell us, tells us to fight about this. He tells us how to fight about it. Not with your arms. Not with your hands. Not with your feet. Not with any uh, weapon, but the weapon that he calls you to do is this first. Here's how we fight. First, we must submit to God. You see, now that we know that we have failed. Now that we know that, that we're in temptation. Now that we know the devil's coming out. We must submit to God. David understood this. He fell. He fell. He did and did what he wasn't supposed to do with Bathsheba and with Bathsheba's husband. And then Psalms 51, one of my favorite scriptures of all time, says this. And I'm going to read a little bit. So if you want to go to it, you go to it. It says this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly through my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transitions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts you will make, uh, make me to know wisdom. Purge me of my uh, uh, us and I call shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sin. Blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit inside of me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and in hope uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God, the God of my salvation. David messed up. He fell under temptation. And he realized he had to go back and submit to God. When the devil comes back after us and we fall, we still have to submit to God. I think about it now. Sometimes my son will come to me and he says, Dad, I got to tell you something, but you're going to be mad at me. And you know what? There's a lot of times we come to God and we say, God, I got to tell you something, but I know you're going to be upset with me. David understood this. You know when we do wrong, we can feel it inside of us. That's where the faith comes from. That's where the spirit comes from. He draws us back to God. And when we fall under temptation, when the devil's coming at us, we need to submit to God and say, God, you are in control. Because I want to let you know this. When you are inside God, like we talked about last Wednesday night, when you're dwelling in the house of God, when you're dwelling with Jesus, when you have the presence of God around you, even when you fall, you can come back to the Father and submit to Him. And the reason why we must do this is because when we submit to Him, we can turn to the devil and say, get behind me, Satan, and he will. 
The Bible says, submit to God. Have you ever said, oh man, my daddy can beat up your daddy. My daddy can do this better than your daddy. Well, my father, God, is all powerful. And when we submit to him, and then the Bible says, resist the devil. James says, not only submit to God, but resist the devil. Now listen, I want to let you know this. If you don't submit to God, you're not going to be able to resist the devil. As a matter of fact, we can't do this on our own strength. But through God's strength, through the power of Jesus Christ, we can not only submit to him, but we can resist temptation in our life. We can resist the devil. Just look at what Revelation 12 and 11 says. And they overcame him by the blood of of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The devil cares nothing for your resolutions or good intentions, but he fears the blood of Jesus Christ. When the devil comes after you, show him Jesus. When he comes after you, show him the blood that has washed your, washed your sins away. Show him that you have God on your side. And when he, you have God on your side, the devil will flee. The devil will flee. I remember in high school, I had a couple friends that were strong and powerful. They were older than me. And one of the gentlemen, man, he was, he was the nicest guy you'd ever meet until you made him mad. And what he would do is he, if anybody was being picked on or anybody was being uh, talked about, or even if you messed up and ran your mouth sometimes, he would follow along. And when somebody was after you, he would make sure to know, if you mess with them, you've got to mess with me. Those type of people I wanted to be friends with. And guess what? God's the same way. When you come to God and submit to Him through His power. And you, the devil comes after you. Or the sinful desires come after you. Or the world comes after you. This is how we fight our battles as the song says. I fight my battle through submitting to Jesus Christ. And resisting the temptations and the sins of this world. And when I do that, the devil will flee. Let the devil know. Let your sinful desires know. Let the worst, let the rest of the world know that in the name of Jesus, all these things must go. Does that mean they won't come back? No, they'll come back. Here at Restoration Chapel, it's a running joke. Everybody knows I do not like mice. But the thing I know about a mouse is when it sees you, it runs. It is scared of you because he knows you're bigger. He knows you're stronger. But the thing about it is when it feels like it can come back out, it will. And this devil's the same way. He's hiding in the cabinets. He's running around at night, tempting you daily, tempting you all the times of your lives. And when you come with him with a powerful God, he will run, but he will come back. That is the reason why daily we have to submit to him. That is the reason why daily we must have a relationship with God. It all goes back to being a child of God. I'm asking you this morning, there's three things I want to challenge you to this morning. The first one is this. If things are going wrong in your life, if you do not know Jesus Christ, not just that they're going wrong, because listen, there's still going to be trials, there's still going to be temptations, there's still going to be hardships. But I'm asking you this morning, if you do not have a relationship with God, the Bible says, call upon his name and you shall be saved. The Bible says, come to Jesus and, and believe in him and you will have everlasting life. My first challenge is for you this morning, if you don't know Jesus, to know him. My second challenge to you this morning is this. There's a lot of you out there that know Jesus, but they're tempted daily and you fall. There's a lot of you that know uh, who God is and, and, and every single time you get around that person, every single time you watch that show, every time you get around the computer, every time you do these things, you fall. I'm asking you not only to flee, but have faith 
and fight by submitting to God. And the third challenge is this. For you that said, hey, I'm already saved. For you that say, hey, everything's going right right now. I don't feel tempted. I'm challenging you to prepare. Prepare. Because the battle's coming. Go ahead, submit yourself to God today. Strengthen yourself through the word. Strengthen yourself through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because guess what? Temptation from your desires is coming. The world is coming. And also the devil is coming. But guess what? Our God is greater. Submit to him. Let's go to prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for each and every one that's hearing this sermon this morning. God, I pray that you just move in a mighty way this morning. Lord, would you help those that do not know you've put a seed in their heart this morning that lets them know that they need you, God. They need to find you, God. They don't have to be in the church building to get saved. They can get saved right where they're at. God, I ask you, change people from death to life. I also ask you, God, for those that are dealing with temptations every single day, and they know they are. They're, they're, the, the inner sides of them, their soul is telling them to quit, but they fall daily. That bait is hanging in front of them, and they latch on daily. I'm asking you to start letting them flee from those things. Not only flee from them, have faith that you're still in control, that you're still moving, and then submit to you so you can fight for them. Resist the devil. God, I'm also praying that we prepare. We prepare through your word, through prayer. God, through, through just giving our testimony. That you will change our lives forever. God, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope this word touched your heart. I'm asking you this morning. Change. Change. I know you're saying, Bobby, what gets you to tell me I need to change? You know what? I need to change too. I have to pray daily. I have to get in his word daily. I need to change in my life too. This morning, thank you for joining us. Please be watching. Please look at our Facebook page. We're getting out information left and right. Please Understand that we are working on a plan to get back into the church building. But also pray and seek God's face that whatever his will is, let it be done. God bless you. If you need anything, contact us. Put it in the message below. Direct message us. Call, call us. However you want to do. But we love you. We miss you. And we'll see you soon. God bless you.